buongiorno and welcome back to Residenza Toscana. My name is Marisa Barilaro Sherrington and today I'm presenting you with an unusual episode today. It's really exciting for me to be able to interview one of my first let's say clients or friends, new friends that's come to Italy on her search, her personal journey towards finding her dream home here in Italy. And she has most kindly volunteered to speak to you all about her journey so that you can see firsthand what it's like to come here for the first time, find a new place, look at homes, understand the bureaucracy, go through all those different things for the very first time and on your very first trip to Italy. And I know a lot of you are ready to take that leap or you would like to, but you hesitate. So I'm hoping today by listening to the beautiful Marsha that it might help you decide to take that leap of faith and come on your journey to Italy as well with us. So stay tuned because we have a lovely episode ahead. So come on the journey with Marsha and I. Such a beautiful evening and I've just come to sit out on the little back balcony. Oh, the peace and quiet. But today I've got a special guest with me. This is a little bit different today. I have a lovely lady sitting with me that's come all the way from Sacramento in California to find me here in Kiani. And I'm going to have a little chat with her because I thought you'd all find it so interesting. So let's pan across now and I'll introduce you to the lovely Marsha. Ciao Marsha, buonasera Marsha, benvenuta a Chiani, welcome to Chiani. Grazie. <laughs> prego, prego. Mm -hmm. So Marsha, um, I think people are going to find this really interesting, the little story of how you met me. So first of all, tell people how we actually got to know one another. Okay, well, um, I saw you on a YouTube channel and I was searching for uh, Italy and people who lived in Italy, just trying to see, you know, what a lifestyle, because I was so intrigued with Italy and I hadn't been here before. And I found you and a couple of other people. But what I found interesting about you was that <laughs> you had bought your house online during the pandemic. And I just thought that was fascinating. That was such a leap of faith. And so I just started following your channel and just loved how you um, just, you know, sort of brought the village of Kiani into my living room. And I'm sure other people have felt the same way. Oh, that's so awesome. So would you mind telling people what your first step was, in fact, how you reached out to me? Well, I responded to you on the YouTube channel and comments and just complimented you on how I love your voice and <laughs> you can sell it so sweet you just your voice is just so soothing and pleasing oh. and as you walk through Kiani just the way you were describing it just really appealed to me and so I decided to email you as well and just to let you know that I have never been to Italy, but always wanted to come and always wanted to, you know, just sort of have this dream that maybe one day I could live here. And you were just so generous and uh, responded back to me immediately and uh, said, you know, that you would help me in any way if I became serious about it. And so over the months, I don't know how many months it's been, it's been a while, <laughs> we corresponded and and then uh, you found some properties that you thought I should look at. And um, I had already been planning the trip anyway. And so when, after I left Rome, I just did a little side trip to Kiani. And I met you and I just feel like I've made a new friend. <laughs> oh, that's so lovely. Thank you. I feel the same way as well. <laughs> 
Well, I'm just so happy that you got here to Kiani in one piece and it was a little bit of a hike to get here, I know. We <laughs> had a couple of hiccups along the way, didn't we? But, yeah. you know, um, that's another story. We might leave that out of this one. But there were a few funny stories to be told. And look, it's always fun to go home with some really good anecdotal stories that you can tell your <laughs> friends. So we'll leave those ones for another day. But um, would you mind sharing, Marsha, so to let everybody know what it was you were actually, you've come here looking for? Because sometimes people think, oh, you know, Tuscany, it's only for people with a big budget or... So maybe if you could share a little bit what you've been looking for so people understand that there's something for everyone. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I didn't really have any expectations. I'm at the lower end of the budget probably than most people. Um, so I was looking for something that I could uh, live in part of the year and also something that I could share with my friends and family um, and uh, that would, you know, mostly something that would accommodate my children, my two children and, and myself. And so I knew that was asking for a lot. My initial list was long. <laughs> I remember. Oh, yes. I want a terrace. I want uh, three bedrooms, two baths, and all this. Uh, Actually, uh, to cut in, I was just going to say to our viewers that Marsha literally wanted what you've got behind her at the moment. <laughs> she wanted to own all of that, those terraces, that view, all oh, my price as well. range. <laughs> yeah, and everything else. Um, yeah. And sometimes we have to just compromise, well, don't we? We just have to compromise a little sometimes. Yeah. You know, it's... Um, we, I think we used to have a lot of discussions about saying, let's get our priorities straight. Mm -hmm. But, you know, talking about priorities, the thing is, is that every single person has their own dream. And something that was really important that we discussed a lot, wasn't it, in our little conversations was that regardless of me sometimes asking you to be a little flexible, perhaps knowing that you might need to compromise, um, that I still constantly said, but I really want you to have what you're dreaming of. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? right. Um, because to me, I say to people constantly, I'm not a real estate agent. In fact, I'm here to help you hopefully find that thing that is your dream. That's what I found coming here. So um, do you want to go into a little bit, just a few little details perhaps about, oh, there are those beautiful bells. That's another thing on our list, wasn't it? Listening yes. to bells chiming in yeah. villages. <laughs> no, tick that box as well. <laughs> and they're done. Um, so what kind of little things maybe were really top priorities for you apart from having space for your children? Mm. Like, you know, little details. That well, I would have loved to have had a garden mm -hmm. and I don't think that's impossible. It, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, in time I might find what I want. I yes. would have loved to have had a terrace. I would yes. have loved the potted plants and, you know, the bougainvillea and all those things. So, mm. so that would have been nice and still might be an option at some point. Mm. Um, I wanted tradition. I wanted the history. I wanted the timbers on, on the ceiling and I wanted the stone walls and I wanted the old kitchen. And, um, I found those. We have seen those. So they are there. They exist. They absolutely do. Yes, those beautiful traditional things, absolutely. That's what I came here for as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I couldn't come to Italy or I couldn't live in France when I lived there either without actually living in the old stones and the old walls and having those things because to me that was part of my journey that was important to me and look there's something out there for everyone mm -hmm. I also show things to people sometimes that are very modern because that's what their heart makes their heart sing mm -hmm. we are also different but um today so we actually went and saw three properties today didn't we which we did. was awesome it was a big <laughs> Actually, it was a big few hours because I know as a new home finder, let's say, in Italy, 
it can be quite overwhelming to see so much and think, mm -hmm. oh, what am I looking at? Mm -hmm. So let's take them one at a time. Okay. Um, so property number one that I'm going to show the viewers little excerpts from. I didn't view a lot, like when I, I left you to your own devices, but um, would you like to tell them maybe a little bit about what you liked about that first property? Well, it was very spacious. Mm. And for the price, it there was a lot of house. Yes. Um, I loved the kitchen. Mm. It had the brick arches, and mm. it was just heavenly. The kitchen was just beautiful. Uh, the bedrooms were large. There were two of them, and there was what you call the snug, another little room that would have been just so sweet for either a single bed or maybe just a little TV room or something like that. Um, it had lovely views, mm. um, and I, I just, the only thing that holds me back, of course, is that I would have to do a little work to it. Yes. Not a lot, but, you know, being a single woman and yes. trying to do this with a limited budget, I was just worried that I might run into something that wasn't expected and that would put me back as far as my decorating um, plans for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, look, absolutely. And these are the things that we have discussed during the day, haven't we? Because um, every single thing, especially if you are coming here on a, a budget, but it doesn't matter. Some people look at very, very um, expensive properties that are still really large projects. So when we've been looking at things today, that's something that I've tried to really like clarify for Marsha along the way as well, that the first property with all its charm, that there were still going to be things to do. And it's because in most cases, when you are looking for something at a lower price range, let's say, there's going to be something to upgrade or something to fix. Okay. Um, but she's very aware of that. But considering, I'm just going to let people know, considering we're looking in a price range which is well under the 100,000 mark, well under, mm -hmm. um, we're talking about 100,000 euros, um, we really were seeing a lot for our dollar or our euro, I think, nevertheless, mm -hmm. weren't we? I yeah. So. Yeah. Sure. So that's a wonderful thing for people to understand that that exists here in these beautiful villages in Tuscany. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be going to places that you think, oh, no, I can't go and live in that area. I had the same concept when I came to Tuscany. I initially thought I won't afford it. And yet I did. Mm -hmm. So, um, We'll go on to maybe, so property number one, just so you know, property number one we looked at here in Kiani. Mm -hmm. So, because Marsha obviously fell in love with Kiani seeing my videos, as she mentioned. Mm -hmm. So that first property was here. <music> Cheers. <laughs> Salute. Salute, Marisa. Salute, Marsha. 
Ah, <clears throat> oh, so just having a little bit of a... It was, it was wine o'clock here, I think. It was Is Laura it? De, de l'aperitivo, the hour of the aperitivo here in Italy. So I went and got Marsha a little glass of <laughs> nice local white wine. <laughs> She was looking awfully thirsty answering all these difficult questions. It's so. always that hour in Italy, isn't it? <laughs> well, I think for a lot of people it probably is, yes. Italy, <laughs> and I should say. Exactly. And when, you're, and when you're on holidays, it always is. Right. Absolutely. That's right. Um, and house hunting is hard work. <laughs> we both needed a, a little siesta, I think, this afternoon, <laughs> didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Um, so we we're up to house number two. Now, house number two, we took off um, rather quickly, I must add. <laughs> um, with our very proficient um, agent that I um, sometimes work with and she has grown up around here so boy oh boy does she knows that knows she really knows those windy roads <laughs> which we don't so therefore we were like just sitting holding on in the car Classic. and we stopped I'll show you a couple of photos I took a lovely photo of Marsha actually that I must show her we stopped in one of my favorite little towns Kashana Terme um, which was lovely little pit stop just for a really quick cappuccino and Marsha loved it loved there it really loved it it is a beautiful place it's a little bit more expensive than some places unless you're looking at some of the modern apartments and because her wish list was not for modern we skipped that but it doesn't mean in the future that something might not come up um and then we traveled on to a lovely place that I had not been to a little village larger than Kiani, although a very different shape. So it was sort of hard to tell that it was larger than mm -hmm. Kiani. It was sort of a long village. And that was called Crespina. And it's much further north than here. When I say much further, it's probably about halfway between here and Pontedera. And how did you love as we drove into that village, Marsha? Loved it. It was so quaint and so sweet. It was just beautiful. And I heard you say the words as we were driving on the road in, in or out of there. Now this is Tuscany. It's I remember so you saying <laughs> The hills and the vineyards. Yes. It was so green. Yes. So beautiful. And I was trying to get a picture and it was just going too fast. It was... Yes. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> And she just drives like Italians drive. Well, not she's Italian. Italian. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> we stayed on the road. That was the most important thing. We never went off the road. But yes, we uh, neither of us, in at, at one stage I did say at the very end, you might have to just slow up a little bit for me because I was getting a bit car sick. <laughs> but it was, it was fun. But that little village was mm. really, really awesome. So we are in Crespina and we're going up to visit a beautiful historic building with the lovely Marsha, who I'm going to introduce to you. Well, there she is now. <laughs> so Marsha's come to visit some homes with me here in wonderful Tuscany. And this is the beautiful building, historical building, which has a turret on the back that's been fully restructured and new roof, etc. And we're going to look at a beautiful apartment in this gorgeous building. And the owner's just opening up for us now. It's going up to a little square up there. There's some amazing villas in this little village, I've noticed, really gorgeous. So we walked past an incredible villa up a little tiny street just with either side, there seemed to be one beautiful house after another, didn't mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. Until we came to this really rather large historical building, mm -hmm. a palazzo, that they call a palazzo. Really beautiful. What were your impressions mm -hmm. there? Uh, it, yeah. Well, first of all, the village was just so pretty and mm. so clean mm. and well taken care of. Mm. And as we walked up the street and then, you know, the house was on the left and it had been recently 
repainted, I guess, or something, but it just was so, so beautiful. And the door was beautiful. And it just, you know, my daughter said in, in one of the videos that I sent her, one of the pictures I sent her of Kiani, yes. she said, it's like a storybook village. Oh, how lovely. All of these little towns are like. It's just little storybook villages, like when we were children and we read, you know, Grimm's fairy tales and, you know, these little villages with, that's exactly what it looks like. It has not changed. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And I think the building we saw today, if I remember rightly, they said that was from the 1700s. Mm -hmm. And as Marsha said, it had totally been restored. They, they've they done a, a total restoration on the entire building, a new roof, which is really important. And they've actually replumbed um, the entire building and new electricity throughout. So again, we're talking about an apartment in a building where there are just three, and let's say three and a half apartments. From what I understood, there was another little tiny one somewhere. Um, but again, within a very, very good budget. Mm -hmm. And to me, this was the perfect getaway for someone that wanted to come in. And as I said, you can drop your suitcase yes. and that's it and just start yeah. relaxing or holidaying. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I know that maybe that wasn't yeah. exactly what maybe you were looking for now. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. We, What was it you liked and what was it, you know, be honest. There was what very little that I didn't like. Mm. Um, it was they were going to paint it which even without the paint it was just beautiful that's true all the furniture was going to stay which yes was a plus and it was exquisite furniture yes it was I antiques mean, antiques that were very very old and probably very valuable i'd say but the view from the kitchen window and the kitchen was large and it was a nice kitchen it was new and it was a know, big eating kitchen wasn't it, was it with a large table but the view from the kitchen, I think the man told us on a clear day, you can see the Tower of Pisa. <laughs> exactly. I just couldn't get over that, yeah. that we actually, because uh, I looked out the window and said, oh, there's Pontedera in one direction. Right. I was shocked that we could see that far because it wasn't as clear today. We've had some humidity in the air. Mm -hmm. And then I looked in the other direction. And he said, that's Pisa. And I went, oh, OK. And he said, you can't see it today, but. On a good, clear day, you can also see the tower. And I went, well, there you go. Gosh, wouldn't that be a story to tell your relatives yeah. and friends? Yeah. It was one bedroom. Yes. But like you say, new roof, new plumbing, new electricity. You bring your suitcase and mm. boom, you're in. The furniture's already there. Unbelievable. So, you know, it's a lot to think about. Absolutely. Uh, if it had two bedrooms, it would have just been perfect. But then again, you know, I have to think, you know, this is, um, where you, this is where you weigh things up yeah. and, and take a little bit of time to digest things. Mm -hmm. So when looking at um, this lovely one bedroom room, which one bedroom apartment, sorry, which is just gorgeous in a very historical building that I showed you from outside. These false ceilings that went into the 70s, if they're taken away, it's going to have very high ceilings in every room with the Tuscan ceilings. So this is one of those places that you come into that's really well priced. A wonderful little holiday apartment for someone that wants something closed up in a beautiful little village, easy to lock up and leave just a few projects to do. The gentleman is actually repainting the entire apartment this week. So it's going to be all refreshed. Um, it was done up in the 70s. So that was the style in the 70s to retile, to redo things like this. Out of the bedroom. Just do a little quick one here. That's the beautiful built-in kitchen. And everything remains there. And the gentleman is leaving all of the furnishings. This is a stunning view. Uh, today is a little bit 
misty because we've had a lot of humidity but the you've got the beautiful hills there pontadera over this side there's pisa and on a very clear day you can see the leaning tower and then obviously in between is just the beautiful rolling tuscan countryside just stunning Continuing on with that apartment, um, I do want to let people know that that apartment, for example, so that they've got an idea. We looked at a few things in different price ranges today to give Marsha a, a bit of a, a span of what you get here, what you get there, different different price brackets, if you like. But she's just described to you a really beautiful apartment and in a gorgeous village where there are all the amenities. Um, we went by a medical centre. There, um, in di different little lanes that we didn't see, there are little bars, restaurants. Um, I saw a hairdressing salon. Um, I saw an ambulance centre. I'm just trying to think what else we drove by. Anyway, evidently everything pretty much that you need is there. But also, it's just two kilometres on a very quick bus route so in other words you'd be there in under five minutes mm -hmm. to a really substantial village another village which is a really beautiful village with a castle and has everything you need as well so it was in a really great spot within really easy reach of Pontadera which is the main train station mm -hmm. that you came in on that train so you've been through there um, so again really well placed and that apartment I'm not going to give exact prices unless people want to know later or, you know, we'll go down that track. But just to let you know that that was, say, under the 60,000 euro mark, which is extraordinary mm -hmm. considering all renewed, freshly painted and keeping all the furniture inside. Mm -hmm. So you walk in, I just said, bring your suitcase and boom. Yeah. Fantastic. In Tuscany. Mm -hmm. So that was really, really impressive. Marsha's just keeping up her courage there with another little sip of that lovely Trebbiano wine. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, it's hard work. <laughs> so then, oh, that might be the bus, I think, beeping down there. Oh. So um, after that lovely apartment, we then whizzed back at high speed. <laughs> I mean before <laughs> in a rush back to beautiful Kiani um, for our third visit and that was to a, a lovely place that is a little bit bigger and a little bit more expensive but still under that hundred thousand mark so always within that range and l would you like to explain to people what you saw in that one? Oh, that one was exquisite um, and also, going back to the bus thing, I'm yes. not going to have a car. Yes. So having the bus come by yes. know, uh, is very important. And the thing about Europe, all over Europe, is the transportation is incredible. There's always buses. There's always trains. There's always subways. You can always get somewhere. I agree so with that's you. that's very important. Mm. Yeah. And here in Kiani, too. Absolutely. Uh, the third one was quite a bit bigger. It was a two-bedroom very big kitchen had a separate living area it had a beautiful bathroom that um had a sort of a little what would you call that area where we were oh talking yes about in, in, in italy we call it a ripostilio okay. it's a little storage room if you like but it right. definitely would make a perfect laundry right mm. so weird because he did not have a washer uh, no it was an older gentleman who used to give all his washing to his nieces to do <laughs> yeah. so he didn't bother buying a washing right. machine why, is, why would you and that's <laughs> one of the things i love about Italy. Exactly, the family. family look, takes care of each they other. They sure do. And mm. uh, so uh, there was room, plenty of room for that, so you didn't have to have the washer in the bathroom, which, you know, is kind of something I don't really care for. Yes, um, and it does happen a lot. Right. You do see it a lot. So. Oh, yeah, mm. yes. Um, and there were some little things that I would need to change, add mm. a wall so we could have a separate 
uh, bedroom, mm. uh, do something with the shower, change out some things in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, it was over my price range, but the views from the windows, there were windows, it was a top floor and there were windows yes. all around. And just so it was a penthouse. Yes, it was a penthouse. <laughs> sun coming in everywhere, and it had the most wonderful cellar. It yes. was huge, and it was, it was. all cleaned up. And yes. you could store things in there. You could have a little, you know, a little, little sete in there. Yes. You have a cantina situation going on, and then outside of that was this gorgeous garden. Which private garden private garden mm. that belonged only to the three people who yes, lived in the, three the building built, yes and that was uh, exquisite it was so gorgeous and i could just see myself sitting out there in a little chair with a glass <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> looking at this beautiful garden that uh one family apparently just keeps it up and it was just beautiful but it was over my budget but for someone who has a little bit higher budget than I do, mm. it's a steal. Absolutely, because we're steal. just so you know, we're still talking about way under the hundred thousand right. mark in this case. Mm -hmm. um, and this place also, if anyone wants to know about it, let me know. It's got a lot of furniture coming with it as well. Oh. Um, also, in the it's one of the most beautiful noble buildings in Kiani. It has the best front doors I've ever seen. Oh my the gosh. most magnificent car front doors yeah. and it also has a fully functioning downstairs a fully functioning bread oven just before you go into the garden yeah. that the community uh, the the people within the building are also allowed to use yeah. so it offers a lot for what you spend there really and that would also be a pizza oven right? yes that's a bread oven is yeah. a pizza oven yeah. that's right oh, okay. exactly right okay yeah So we're visiting a lovely apartment now in Kiani that we've been to before. Taking Marsha yeah. to yet another lovely apartment. Just going up the lovely old, these are the original stone stairs. This is a beautiful ancient noble house in fact. That was divided into apartments. Amazing views out the windows. So Marsh is just having a little look around <laughs> this lovely apartment that I've been into before, but um, I don't think I've actually showed you. So this one has the most magnificent high Tuscan ceilings. It does need updating. It was a gentle, an older gentleman, but everything has been redone as far as there's no major works to do. It's more aesthetic stuff. This fireplace takes huge logs and heats up the whole house, but you do have well working radiators throughout. The caldaia, which they call, which is the heating system, if you like the boiler, is rather new. Um, the bathroom was redone five years ago. Very light because we're on the top floor. So we're looking down into the little old streets and lovely views out that way. In the heart of, of course, the Centro Historico of Chiani. So this would make a lovely big eating, lounge dining, and lounge area skylight there beautiful high pitch ceilings here a lot of the furnishings will stay and these are the views from the main bedroom which are just stunning absolutely stunning and gorgeous bedroom here with the most beautiful pitch ceilings the beautiful chestnut wood beams everything is ceramic tile throughout Well, we did see some beautiful, really lovely properties today. There's no doubt about it. Um, and now, kind of to finish up as far as that goes, having been someone that only had seen Kiani in this area and me traipsing around places and whatever, um, that was your only impression you had. 
what is your impression now of this area? Is this the place to come to? <laughs> this is the place to live. <laughs> and because it's so close to Pisa, it's close to uh, Florence, it's close to all the famous cities in Tuscany, uh, which of uh, Kiani is one of them, uh, but it is it, now. Of course, it is because <laughs> you made it famous. <laughs> but it's it's just it's you know I was in Rome for four days, loved Rome. Yes, but it was busy. And when I came here, what happened the first night I was here? I slept late. That's I true. I slept like a baby. And you were the second person that told me that day that uh -huh. they'd um, another friend had arrived that night, and he said, oh, "I mm -hmm. slept like a baby and couldn't yes. wake up." Yes. It's the tranquility, isn't it? Right, right. Mm. And then if I want to go back to Rome, I just mm. take the train and I go back to Rome. Absolutely. And you can even go for the day, you know, if you Absolutely. want. I mean, it's a long train ride. But Florence and Pisa and Lucca and mm. all of those places around that area Absolutely. Are, are just not even an hour away that's right yes. exactly but yes. yet you have the tranquility of the countryside that you can come back to absolutely and that's what appealed to me i think oh wonderful yeah. i'm so glad if i wanted to see a museum hop on a train and go and come back in the afternoon and absolutely and, and you know what else i like about these little towns well Kiani is, is yes. the only one that i've experienced but yes the people are are you know the same people sit in the same spot yes the little lady yes, you know, yes. <laughs> they have their conversation yes and you meet people that you get to know and people are out and they're drinking and they're eating and uh, especially during the uh, summertime, there's lots of music which I missed. Yes, of course. Um, and I'm a I love live music, so I look forward to that. Absolutely. Yeah. You just brought up a good point, though. We're here now in October, which is not the high season, but how does the village feel, nevertheless? Still enough life going on. Like do people sometimes are worried that there's not enough out of those summer months. But how? What's your impression oh, when you I, walk the streets? I think um, I don't. You know, like I said, I just came from Rome where there was <laughs> yeah more than enough life. Mm. But here, you know, the la you know uh, we've gone out and to dinner yes. and that kind of thing and. Um, and there are little groups of people sitting around, a lot of people that you know, which yes. you know is nice. And, yeah. and it's it's just, everybody is just so friendly to each other, care about each other, I'm sure would help each other if the need arises. Mm -hmm. And it just feels like such a loving community. Oh, I'm so glad you felt that because that's exactly what I've always said to people. But it's lovely to hear it from somewhere, someone else because mm -hmm. obviously I feel a certain way. But it's lovely to see mm -hmm. that you felt that just in a very short amount of time. Right. So that makes me really, really happy. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. Good. But have I helped to clarify a lot of the, say, the bureaucratic or the the different things that you might have to go through? And do you mm -hmm. think you would have coped quite as well without having had chatted to me prior? You have been unbelievably helpful. There is no way I could have done this without you. And, you know... <clears throat> so kind. I, I don't know. Uh, you know, this, I'm just starting this journey um, I might end up coming back and living in Italy for a little while as a renter and still explore and try to find what I'm looking for. But it's such a great um, sort of a security blanket maybe to have you around so that I can consult with you. If I find something I like, I can say, well, what do you think about this? and you can do the research and find out about whether or not it needs a new roof or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. maybe it needs nothing, maybe it's a bad part of town, I don't know. But you are such a great resource and I just can't even imagine if I ever, if I take the leap to buy something, which I is my dream. I think you will. Um, you know, I can't imagine doing it uh, without you. Oh, that's so kind, it's, Marcia. It's Thank you so kind, much. It's kind, but it's the truth. Thank you it so really much. It really is the truth. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Yes, it's um, and that's so lovely of Marcia to say. But I, I think one of the most important things is, um, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, having said that, is that 
when someone's looking and they're a bit of a novice, let's say, and that's not an offensive thing I'm saying, but we're all novices when we first start out, of course. None of us are, are professionals at finding homes initially as such, um, unless that's what you've been doing all your life. Mm-hmm. And there are, are a lot of potential pitfalls, and we've seen those. And right. Marsha would often send me links, wouldn't you, to say, <laughs> oh, I just love this one. And I thought, hmm, <laughs> what is this hiding behind those photos? And, of course, I would get on the phone to an agent or I would research myself and I could either see from the position that it was way somewhere where she wouldn't want to be, Mm -hmm. number one, or, for example, um, yes, it totally needed a whole new roof on the building and it was going to cost a bomb and that's why it was so inexpensive to start Mm -hmm. with. So there were all these factors and they're the kind of things that you wouldn't know, would you, just by looking at a pretty picture on the internet? Right, mm. right. And, you know, I trust you so much that when I leave here and go back to America and I find something online and you check it out and you think it's worthwhile, I trust you completely to, you know, make that decision with your stamp of approval. Oh, that's so kind. But, and, and, you know, and I... I I know you think I'm being kind, but this is exactly how I feel. And now having met you, I know that you're a person of integrity, you're a person of honor, and you really genuinely want to help people. You know, you're not in this for the money because I don't think you're going to get enough money, but (laughs) but you genuinely, uh, really, genuinely, really want to help people. I do. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that is something I I wish I just want everyone to know oh that's so lovely thank you so much I'm so glad you felt that as well and it Mm -hmm. it has been like a a passion project in that sense that um it's one of those things funny enough that I have always enjoyed educating and helping others to Mm -hmm. know something new and Mm -hmm. so in this process of David and I searching and me doing most of the research of course because I was the one with the time and probably more of the knowledge and the language experience of course as well Mm -hmm. being able to speak both languages um it was something where I felt gosh there's so much that goes on and that's hidden or unknown. And yes, there's lots of things you can look at on YouTube now or different places. Um, But sometimes even those things you have to be careful because you can get misinformed with some groups that you jump into or it just gets overwhelming, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why I decided by being able to help people one-on-one Um, it was just going to be very simplified for them and also a real personal journey because I was just zoning in on what they needed to know and what their needs were and their desires Mm -hmm. were um, rather than sort of generalising, Mm -hmm. like you might get general answers in something, but this is far more specific. Mm -hmm. Mm. So I'm glad that you felt that so far and we're just at the beginning of your journey. Mm -hmm. Um, We've still got quite a ways to go. But it's been an absolute pleasure, honestly, meeting you and helping you these last couple of days to see the potential here and how your dreams can come true, in fact. Uh (laughs) I'm so glad you feel that way because I certainly feel that way. And I feel like I've made a friend as well. Well, you have. You have. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. So, look, thank you so much for chatting with me over this. And hopefully we've, you know, helped to encourage others to to live their dreams and also to, to not think, oh, no, this is not doable for me. Let me just say one more thing. Absolutely, that, please do. You brought that up. Yes, I just turned seventy. I had never. Can been, you believe oh, that? I Can had, you believe that? I had never been to Europe. <gasps> yes, dreamed of it my whole life, but I came to Europe last year at the age of sixty-nine. My good, good friend Amanda <laughs> <laughs> invited me to visit her in Spain, and I took that opportunity, and from there went to France and. Um, and then later uh, to Portugal, and now I'm back here in Italy. Mm-hmm. And I love Europe, and it's just, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you have a dream, follow that dream. Mm-hmm. I might not ever buy a house in Italy. I might just come here a lot, you know. I love to have a home here. 
but I just don't know, you know, if it will happen. And I kind of think it will. Mm. Uh, but if, you know, I know that there are people out there mm. who have this dream and are afraid. And I mean, if I can do this by myself, coming to, to I'm going to be here 23 days by myself, except for these few days with you. Yes. If I can do this, anyone can do this. Fantastic. It doesn't matter the age. It doesn't matter about anything. If it Absolutely. is your dream, follow it. Thank you so much. That's a wonderful way to finish <laughs> up. And <laughs> so um, we hope that you've enjoyed this. And um, as you can see, Marsha is such a lovely lady and it's been a wonderful experience having her here. So I'm going to um, close off now and say ciao just for now, Marsha. I'm sure we will chividiamo, which means we'll <laughs> see each other again. I hope so. <laughs> ciao. Ciao. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope you've all enjoyed it very much. If you have, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's free. And if you liked it, please think about giving me a thumbs up and I'd love you to leave me a comment. And as I said, just reach out to me if you'd like any more information on any of the homes you saw during the video. My email is in the description. And I'll see you next time. Ciao from Residenza Toscana. Alla prossima!